we're there. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Tara Humphrey, Mrs. Humphrey, to all my students uh, at the Lowell Public Schools. I teach art at the Laura Lee, uh, at Dr. Janice Aidy, and at the LeBlanc High School. So we have a great, uh, really amazing opportunity today. We're going to be talking to an artist, a real live artist. Um, <laughs> He's in a, a lot of things. This is my friend of many, many years. I'm sorry to say, I probably have known you and your wife like going on to 20 years. I know you're mm -hmm. um, This is Dave Sullivan. Uh, you can hey. see that hey, he's. Tara. Uh, hey, sorry. He's at Sol DZ93. You can see it on the screen. Uh, anyway, um, so welcome, Dave. Hi, Tara. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Looking forward to talking to you. Today. Um, thank you. Um, so we first met uh, through theater. Yes, we did. That's correct. Yeah. Um, I, I don't remember which show we first did together. I believe it was the Philadelphia story. But uh, we, we've all been in, um, I know that you were in a different, a lot of different shows with Rebecca. Uh, and we all just kind of hung around with the same people and uh, we always stayed in touch no matter uh, where our theater um, predilections took us. We all just kind of stuck together and um, stayed in touch. Yeah, it's great. Now, you mentioned Rebecca. Rebecca is Dave's wife. Um, <laughs> I think it's just want to take a moment um, because both Dave and Rebecca are essential workers. During this really tough time, oh, I get so emotional doing this stuff, but it is. Um, <laughs> Rebecca is a nurse uh, and she is working. And can you tell us where she's working, Dave? Yeah, uh, she is a registered nurse. So she's an RN at Boston Medical Center and she's for I, I, 20 odd years at this rate. Um, but yeah, uh, it's been a trying time for her, um, but uh, her, her floor um, at BMC just went to an all COVID-19 patient floor. So all of the patients that she deals with when she's there um, um, are coronavirus patients. Um, and yeah, that's, that's a little uh, disheartening to have to announce out loud to a lot of uh, your students there. But um, uh you know we all put on the brave face and uh, that's what she signed up for and uh that's what she does and she doesn't have a lot of time to think about oh am i gonna get sick and uh, I, I really shouldn't be bringing this home you know she's she's doing god's work by uh taking care of those uh sick people and um hopefully you know with some with the right amount of medicine the right amount of care and maybe a little better uh they'll get better yeah and, and uh, well, all those frontline workers We'll get better. Sorry, and we thank you too because you are also working for you work for MGH in security and pretty much do yeah I work yeah yeah um I, I I've been at MGH for sixteen years now and uh, yeah, I'm a security officer there I'm trained as a First responder, you know, all of the security officers at MGH get first responders um, training. So, um, granted, I'm not rushing into a patient's room, um, luckily, but uh, a lot of my fellow officers every once in a while have to. And there's a gowning process that they have to go through. And um, yeah, we're all we're all on the front lines. We're all doing our thing. Um, and yeah, if uh, if duty calls, if uh, if I'm needed in Chelsea or Danvers, or be it at the Navy Yard, the research uh, facility um, affiliated with MGH, or where I'm usually stationed at the uh, the Institute of Health Professions, which is the graduate school affiliated with MGH, uh, which is where I normally am. Um, yeah, it's kind of you 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 go where you're asked to go, and you don't really. Uh, question it and you don't really hem and haw or get your belly ache much about it you just go and do well we thank you for doing that and today you know your time is very valuable but i am going to adjust this a little bit um i think my students see me enough so they might need to see you a little better here all right perfect um well we're here to talk a little bit about your your other job your yeah. thing that you love to do and that is cartooning and we're yeah. 
get you, oh, and there's an example of uh, something I just <laughs> saw on Instagram, which is really exciting. Um, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, your style of cartooning. I like to say that I don't really have a specific style. Um, I like to think that I'm adaptable to what the project calls for. Specifically for the piece that you have up, um, it was the it was um, someone put out a hashtag of six fan art, and it was basically you know make, give me six characters to make fan of. Um, I'm a fan of Disney and Pixar movies, so you know, draw Mike Wazowski and Carl from Up. You know, that was kind of a no brainer. I, I love Spider Man. That was a request from my daughter, but I think she was asking me to do a caricature of Tom Holland. You know, she's a big fan of him. Um, and my son had asked for Thor, so uh, yeah. Um, but then doing Baloo from Tailspin, had never drawn him before. Princess Leia, had never drawn her before. So you just kind of go through some reference. Um, I had a couple books around, lying around in the office, and uh, I had to go do some Google searching for Baloo. But uh, yeah, I think I, I think my style is very just kind of adaptable. Um, whereas I can I like I do like cartoony stuff. But I like to do caricatures as well. So um, whatever the project calls for, I think um, I can adapt. And I've been, I've been trained. Um, I, I do have a, a BFA. I have a Bachelor's of Fine Art degree from UMass Lowell. And I studied at Mass College of Art. And that was real great training to get adapted to different types of um, application. Apl apl applying what you can do from what you're being taught into any specific project. Well, you say that and I see a distinct style here and your characters are really quite fun and um, I could think I could tell them from a mile away. So I think that's a style, <laughs> but I do love that you um, work with other people's characters as well. Um, I would i love this one i just saw this one too um do you um can you tell us a little bit about how you got started in um in drawing and cartooning yeah absolutely um i think it, it just kind of comes from um wanting to keep myself entertained uh i've always been a fan of um cartoons uh, be it the looney tune cartoons or even just comic strip cartoons in the newspaper a uh, big fan of the, the Sunday morning comic strip page and just seeing all these different characters and different stories and different jokes and different, uh, just different scenarios. And I, I, that always just drew me in as a, at a, as a young child. But when I was around 10, being in the fifth grade, uh, my, my teacher, Miss Silk, noticed uh, that I was sitting down during a field trip to a uh, local farm and i was just drawing the canadian geese that were flying onto the pond and flying off of the pond and she really just kind of looked over my shoulder and she was the very first person um to say you know you're good at this you, um this is something that you per should pursue keep at it keep drawing um here here's a blackboard draw you know at the end of class if there's time here you can draw on the chalkboard and show the students how you like to draw snoopy and garfield and so that was that was a big, uh, m um, big inspiration for me. Was my fifth grade teacher, Miss Silk. Uh, she really saw that I had some sort of potential to to, and you to, went do, to, to do well. Uh, and you went to Lowell Public Schools, right? I did. I'm a product. I'm a proud product of the Lowell Public School System. And don't get me started on my family's uh, affiliation with the Lowell Public School Systems because I don't think your students um, have a week <laughs> for me to go through my family members who are affiliated with the Lowell Public School System. And you were at the Mori when you were first started out? I started at the, um, well, what was the Pine Street School in the Highlands, uh, which is now the Margaret R. Brady, um, I don't know, I think it's like a secondary school now, but that's where I started, that's what K through three was there. The Mori was four and five, uh, the Daily, six, seven, and eight, and then um, LHS, uh, Proud Red Raider, uh, for four years. Nice. That's great. And that's where the that's where the ninety three on my uh, Instagram tag comes from. I was a 90, 1993 graduate of Lowell High School. Excellent. <laughs> um, 
So uh, while I have this little picture up, can you yeah. tell me about what, where this guy came from? So I'm sure a lot of your students know who this guy is. This is, um, he's, often, he's often referred to as Baby Yoda, but I think he's more commonly referred to as the child on uh, that television show called The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. Um, a friend of mine put out to her Facebook um, friends and family that her son was having a birthday recently and couldn't have the party that he really wanted to, you know, because of the, the times that we live in, you know, no big groups of more than 10 really, or even like any social gatherings at all. So she put out to her, you know, viewership, hey, can you send my son some cards or what have you to really sort of brighten his mood? And um, I threw my hat in the ring and I said, well, yeah, I can draw up anything that he would want. Um, and she says, you know, he, he's really into the Mandalorian. He loves Baby Yoda. And I said, I can drop a Baby Yoda for him. I'll, I'll, I'll get right on that. You know, uh, uh, a 9 by 12 envelope and some postage later, it made its way to Arizona. And uh, it made its way to his kitchen counter. And he absolutely loved it. And she hasn't stopped really thanking me for it since. So, no. uh, but yeah, that, that was fun to draw. And actually, it's kind of, kind of quick. It was, a, it was a quick draw. Um, maybe, maybe a couple of hours. But uh yeah, it was, a, it was that was a fun piece to do. That's great, and uh, you know, going all the way to Arizona, I guess that's a little more than our six feet social distancing. Welcome. Yeah, 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 definitely. It works out perfect. Yeah, but you know, and like you, like you and I were talking about earlier, I'm like, this is why we make art. You know, we're trying to make others happy with uh -huh. what we do. You know. Um, and yeah, this, um, here's another piece. Like this is something from my own sketchbook. Um, I had an idea. I've been reading, um, actually listening to, um, in my commute to work, I've been listening to a uh, biography of Walt Disney and just thinking about Mickey Mouse a lot and what he means to that company as a, just a character and uh, as a logo and more of like an icon now. Um, thought about the icon, the iconic shape of Mickey Mouse and, well, what kind of costumes can I put on him? And of the time, I thought about, well, I started, I first started drawing him in a Charlie Chaplin type of um, maybe uh, bow tie and coattails and um, derby hat. But then, you know, being a fan of the comic books, I thought to myself, well, how about if I throw a costume onto Mickey Mouse? And so uh, I just decided to go with the iconic Spider-Man uh, costume and throw, throw that on Mickey Mouse. And so that was just a pencil sketch. But at some point, I would like to get him onto some regular board and maybe ink him up and maybe throw some glitter on him and see how he looks there. Yeah. But yeah, that's just from the I sketchbook. And, you know, maybe like, maybe 50. I'm sorry, say that again, what? Oh no, go ahead. How long did it take? It was maybe like a 15 or 20 minute drawing. Um, but I see there's a little bit of, there's a note down by his shoe where it says web of the shoes meaning putting some webbing on the shoes like spider-man would have webbing on his uh on his booties or as they were uh, but th th that being from the sketchbook you know the sketchbook is just another avenue to just get these ideas down and it doesn't really necessarily have to be a drawing sometimes the ideas you know of course they're in word form and so you try to you try, just try to get as much down as you can and, and when the idea hits when well, the I idea there yeah. try to have a book around so, so there's some uh kind of double inspiration here right I mean, we've got the mickey inspiration and the um spider-man inspiration um in this cool kind of genre of mashups that we see all over the web mm. no uh, definitely yeah yeah web <laughs> so <laughs> pun intended yeah, um, can you tell us a little bit more about other artists and maybe cartoonists that you're inspired by? Oh, definitely. Um, like I said, I started off as a fan of comic strips, and so I'm a big fan of Charles Schulz, who did Peanuts. A uh, big fan of Bill Watterson, who did uh, Calvin and Hobbes. I'm a big fan of a guy that I don't know if many people know about, but they might see his comic strip. A uh, guy by the name of Jeff, uh, I'm sorry, Jim Borgman. Um, who does a comic strip called Zitz. In fact, I have a, a number of his books. Um, and my eight-year-old uh, just spent the last two weeks reading through pretty much all of them. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. And there's about 15 of them. Um, and, that's, and that's only my uh, 
collection. There's a, I think there's like 15 more books uh, in his collection. But uh, my, my son brings them back. He's like, yeah, do you have more of these? Um, but uh, I'm also a big fan of Jeff Smith, who does Bone. Um, I, I think maybe some of your students might have heard of Bone, uh, these three Bone characters. that They're just bones, but they're uh, very human-like, and they're very zany and madcap, and they go on these great adventures, and they, they look very Looney Tune-esque, but they exist in this kind of Tolkien, um, Lord of the Rings type of atmosphere. It's very fantasy-based, and um, it's really, really wonderful. I love it a lot. Um, but a, a, another... Um, artist I'm a big fan of because I feel that he's kind of going through what a lot of artists are going through nowadays. His name is Michael Jancy and he has a day job. You know, he's, he's taught at, out at SCAD, um, um, Southern California um, Art Institute. I think that's what it's called. Um, but he, he works at Amazon. You know, he has a job at Amazon, but he still finds the time to sit down at his drawing board and draw a comic strip every day. And he's put a bunch of projects up on Patreon and Kickstarter just to get his stories that he's creating out to the public. And he's a, and he just, he'll sketch and he'll put it up on Instagram, like a, maybe like a 10 minute sketch, he'll throw up all of his artwork, just gets thrown up onto Facebook and Instagram. He's just trying to generate, still trying to generate interest for his artwork while still working a full-time job. I think a lot of people are in that uh, in that place. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I was looking at a lot of your. Oh, here's another one. Yeah, Raven from uh, Teen Titans Go. Big fan of uh, the Teen Titans. There. Uh, my son was. Uh, he oh he was he was uh, Beast Boy for Halloween two years ago. In the last year, he was Cyborg. Um, we're just big fans of that uh, of that show, um, and she she's very colorful and moody. And uh, again, just, that's just another piece from the sketchbook. Just I had an idea because her uh, her, yeah, yeah. Line, her her line the artists that draw her they make her lines very flowy and um, uh, colorful. Uh, so that's why I went with the pinks and the purples there on her outfit and with that very kind of explosive background um because she's a very unpredictable type of character you don't really know what she's gonna do or say next kind of like the both of us actually <laughs> <laughs> See, um, you more you more so than me i think oh, i'm not uh, all right probably um so you watch so I know that um, that you have some work that you are incredibly proud of. Is there something that's, that you are the most proud of, the thing that you really enjoyed the most? Yeah. Um, every year, uh, right around Christmas time, um, actually, my, my wife would prefer that I start this project in August. Um, <laughs> but usually around October or November, I start thinking of ideas for our Christmas card. And I've been creating our Christmas card now for as long as Rebecca and I have been together, which is um, going on 15 years. Ooh. And uh, yeah, we're going to celebrate uh, our 15th wedding anniversary in June. Okay. Um, but I've been including my, our, our kids into our, into our uh, Christmas card now ever since my daughter's been born, which was when she was, uh, so she's 12, almost 13. Um, and that's just something that I really love to do every year. And, I, and like I said, I wish I would, I wish I were to spend more time doing it. But um, alas, it's just trying to come up with that one image that's really going to kind of show what Christmas is like for the Sullivans that year. So there was one year where I had the four of us out in the snow but we're looking up at you know the north star and you know the star that the the magi followed to go see the baby jesus when he was born but uh this is probably back when brian was an infant so this is going back eight eight nine years really so this was this was a fun one to do well i think it really captures um your whole family and it's just so much fun to see those every year yeah and th this, this was one from maybe, I don't know, I'd probably say it was around maybe 10 years ago at this rate, where I had Julia running the toboggan. Um, and this was, this, was a, this was a fun one to do. Uh, probably shouldn't have had her running the toboggan, as it were. 
but I, like I said, it's, uh, it's an avenue when I can sort of, um, oh yeah, the year's right on it, 2009. So we're going back 11 years there. Um, it's, I feel it's, uh, it's an avenue where I can really kind of stretch my muscles and really show uh, my love for cartooning along with my love for fine art and just bright colors and, uh, and getting it out to my friends and family, you know, and sending that out every year. I get a big kick out of sending out our Christmas card every year and showing my family and friends what, um, what we've been up to and what I'm capable of. And everyone loves getting it. So that, again, that's, uh, that's really it for me is really getting my artwork into people's hands. And yeah, just another, just another piece from the sketchbook, Spidey, just trying to, again, figuring it out, you know, swinging away. Um, Great. It was, it was a pose that I saw, uh, I think on a different character. Uh, maybe I think it was a, I think that was a Batman pose, but I decided to take that pose and make it into Spider-Man and just put the Spider-Man costume on that, uh, very kind of, um, exaggerated, um, style. That's great. Um, so I would love to hear a little bit about your process because we're getting a little hint here of um, okay. what you work with. So if you could just talk a little bit about kind of your space, what tools you use, paper, pens, pencils. Yeah, I use it all. Um, I primarily work on a board. It's called Bristol board. It's a very thick, stiff, heavy board. It can take a lot of abuse. Uh, it takes all sorts of mediums um, quite well. It doesn't really buckle when you use a wet medium all that well. Um, but uh, I, because I primarily work in pencil and, and ink and um, it takes a lot of eraser abuse quite well <laughs> because I do a lot of erasing. Um, so it takes a lot of abuse and um, like I work with, um, you know, cartoonist's best friend is a Sharpie, right? Um, but um, I use uh, these Micron pens for my cartooning. Um, I love these pens. They don't really dry out all that much um, as long as you take care of them and uh, you recap them. I'm a bi oh, that's such a pet peeve of mine is having an uncapped pen in the house. I can't stand it. Um, but yeah, um, all, all sorts of anything that can make a big, thick, fat black line. This is a Windsor Newton brush marker. Uh, it's got a, it, it's got a chisel point on one end and the other end is a, a fine, almost brush type of nib. And you can get all sorts of different crazy lines with that. But, uh, yeah. Um, and for color, I primarily use colored pencils, but, um, I do, uh, I do paint every once in a while, uh, as you can see what's up right now. Um, and that's a painting on a canvas of a Celtic knot that I did for uh, the Brush Art Gallery in downtown Mall um, for their four by four for education um, auction that they have every year. Uh, but yeah, that's what, the, the, that's, I'm a dry medium kind of guy. Um, that's, it's just ease. It's what I'm more comfortable with than anything. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't work digitally really. The only time I really work digitally is when I take photos of my artwork and I put filters on them in uh, like the, the photo app on my iPhone. <laughs> but uh, I'm not on a Wacom. I don't work in Photoshop. I don't work in um, Procreate or anything like that. I'm, I'm down, I'm, I like the, uh, the, the touch. I'm a very tactile kind of um, artist. Oh, and here and there's my space. There it is. Yeah, I put a lot of stuff on my walls that I'm, inspired by I, I wish it were a little neater but um got some brushes down there i got my um the thing that on the far end of my drawing table is my light board i do a lot of tracing uh with inking uh when you're doing transfers from uh like a like a sketch piece of paper onto the bristol i do a lot of transfer uh and the light board helps with that a lot um and yeah i'd like to keep the sketchbook around um again plenty of um Plenty of pens and markers and um, a rag to uh, wipe down any um, wet brushes that I might have lying around. Um, but yeah, plenty of books for inspiration, plenty of stuff on the walls to keep me inspired and happy and just some awards that I've won from when I was an editorial cartoonist <laughs> from the newspaper that I worked for for a couple years ago. Yeah. Well, that's a, hey, that's a good way to go into another question. Um, you worked for a newspaper doing political cartoons. I, yes, um, indeed I did. And um, now, do you, 
Now, is this something you could do as a career? Like we have some kids that, that are really great at cartooning. Is this like a, um, you know, a big money maker? Um, I, for the most part, I would say, is it a big money maker? No. Um, is, is that ability there? Oh, absolutely. Is the ability to make a lot of money there? Absolutely. It all depends on how, how bad do you want it? Um, but it all, it all, a lot of it depends on the avenue that you, that, that they decide to travel down. If they want to sell their artwork up on, um, a couple of websites that I can think of off the top of my head, Etsy, E-T-S-Y, or, um, Deviant Art or deviant art i believe i don't remember which one is which but a lot of cartoonists that i know put their artwork up there and um they are just working on commission or just working freelance um if but if you really want to tell stories and get your stories into books and publish those books it's another avenue it's it's going to be a long one but it's an avenue to travel if you so decide to and comic books definitely an avenue as well um unfortunately that uh avenue is a little dry right now because of the times that we live in but even if you just want to work on commission even if you just want to make artwork for people that see that you have talent and say um you know promote yourself via the social medias um put your stuff out there on it or you it's easy to create a website nowadays for anybody to create a website you can go to wix or squarespace and make your own website and promote yourself that way yeah there's a oh, ton of ways to do it. Yeah, that's great advice. Um, uh, also means pretty much kind of stay in school. <laughs> so oh, that too. Yeah, get, get get that degree. Stay yeah. in school. That's, that's, and, that's a big know, thing. It's nice to have things to fall back on too, which, um, you know, and, and like, like we said, you have a job, a day job. I know a lot of artists who work other jobs so that they can do what it is that they love to do. Um, and I saw a theme in here that you basically make things for other people, which is a really um, generous thing to do. So. Um, well, I, th I, th I think that's, I think that's what art ought to be anyway, regardless of what medium it takes, be it music. Music isn't just for someone to play. Music is for someone to listen to, even if you're just the listener of creating your own music. You want someone else to hear that music. I mean, Beethoven, he was deaf. He needed someone else to, to hear his music. Um, um, I mean, Vincent Van Gogh uh, just finished a biography about him. All he wanted was to get his artwork up in galleries, and his brother helped him with that, but he never sold a painting in his life. You know? He just, I... wanted, his artwork, he just wanted his artwork up in galleries. Um, so, yeah, having people see your stuff is pretty much, you know, regardless of who it may be. I mean, that's the ultimate goal, really. And there he is in all his glory, Mr. Groot. Yeah. He is group way. Um, yeah, that was a fun little piece I did for my. I did that for my nephew. Then yeah, one of my favorites, and I think it really shows kind of your style of that. Um, you know, really getting into uh, your subject and giving it some personality there. Um, and I know I've taken a whole lot of your time. I do want to ask you um, an important question. Do you think of yourself as an artist? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. I mean I, I, I mean, I can say that I have a degree that tells me that I am one, but it, I don't let it really define me as only, I don't just define myself as only an artist. Um, and, you know, the amount of years that I've lived, I'm, and granted, I'm only 45, um, I've become a lot of different things in that amount of time. I'm not just a cartoonist. I am a cartoonist. I love being a cartoonist. However, uh, I'm also a security officer. Um, and that helps pay the bills. And I'm not just those two things. And I don't let those two things just define me. I'm a husband. I'm a father. Uh, I'm a son. I'm a brother. I'm a cousin. I'm a friend. Uh, I'm a shoulder to lean on. Uh, but I'm also, I'm, I'm an actor too. And you know that just as well as, uh, you know, as any of our, all of our other friends, you know, I've, I'm an actor. But again, I don't let that define me. It's just something that I like to do. As, as being a father, there's something that I like to do as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well, I think that's a, a wonderful answer to that. Um, 
before we finish up, um, do you have um, anything else you'd like to share with our students, some advice maybe? We have some budding artists, some kids that are really very talented. Um, if you have any kind of parting words or advice for them. Um, yeah, keep, keep a sketchbook. Uh, it doesn't matter what size it is, big, small, something that fits in your pocket, or even if you, you know, are technically inclined, um, open, up a, open up a note on, on the notes app on your phone and draw something on your phone. But draw every day and draw from life. You know, look at life, observe life. Doesn't matter if it's a person, a tree, a rock, a lamp, a, set, a flight of stairs, a building. Draw from life. Draw things that you see in front of you. Um, a big thing I think for cartoonists is, uh, don't worry about style. Style will come. Draw first. Draw as much as you can. And I think I've always been a proponent of the more you draw will define your style. The more you try to get ideas down will define you stylistically. and um so but with that said um don't be afraid to try something different i've always been a fan of um cartoonists or even just artists in general who t who try a different form of art it's just another form of communication it's another form of expressing themselves uh i know some cartoonists who who do oil paintings on like like huge nine by six canvases, nine foot by six foot canvases. Like he is typically known for drawing covers for comic books, but he's been showing a lot of his stuff from his studio and he's working on these, these ginormous oil paintings of the Grand Canyon and Grand Canyon-esque type of uh, environments. So don't be afraid to try something different. Uh, even if you do work digitally, don't be afraid to pull out the sketchbook, the, you know, the, the bound sketchbook and draw something every day, but keep, keep at it. Don't stop. If this is something that you like, it's something that you enjoy. It's something that you want to continue to do. Don't stop. Keep at it. I love it. That is great, great, great advice. And um, we have taken a lot of your time. I am so appreciative. I'm sure that my kids are just gonna love seeing the video. Um, well, thank you for having me on, Tara. I really enjoyed doing this. This was a lot of fun. Well, we miss you. We haven't seen you in a long time. We thank it you for what you're, uh, you know, what you're doing out there, kind of front lines, both of you. And um, we really appreciate you taking the time to talk to their kids today. Anytime, Tara, you got it. Um, thank you for talking to me and we'll, we'll see you soon. Enjoy. Bye, bye. Bye, kids. <laughs>